Hi, my name is Sean Olson. In this video, we're going to discuss how to use the four-way blend tools in 3ds Max, how to create, generate four-way blends, and how to use them inside of Max. Now, if you're not familiar with four-way blend, it's a way of blending four textures based off of the vertex colors of your displacements. It's only available in some source games like CSGO and Black Mesa. There may be others. You'll have to look at the documentation for your mod. So let's get started here. I'm going to open up the material editor and in this scene I already have four materials. They're standard materials and these happen to be substance driven materials. So there are four bitmap to material three driven materials here. And these are going to be the four textures that I'm going to blend between in the material. So now we're going to generate the material that represents the four-way blend inside of Max. To start with, we're going to add a composite material. If we add it here, it's going to start with a dummy material. What we need to do is add the material that's the base into the base material, and we can delete that other material. So what I've done here is said that this is going to be the base material of the four-way blend, and then I just pipe in these other materials that I want into it. We only use four. The composite has more than four, but we're not going to use those. We only use the first four slots in here. We double click it, you'll see all of the materials that are in here. And now what we do is we assign that material to some objects in the scene. So I have two Corvex systems that represent brushes. I'm going to apply that to the selection. Now that I have this, I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to convert this set of substance driven materials into bitmap driven materials, which I can do when I have this selected. I and choose wallworm, wallworm materials, and click this button that says replace object textures with bitmaps. And what's going to happen here is these output nodes, which are currently map output selectors, it's going to replace all of those with bitmaps instead of these substance driven things. Now this function only works in Wallworm Pro. Uh, you'll have to do this manually if you use the other ones. So it'll take a second here as it creates the bitmaps of all of those maps inside the materials. When the function finished, if I go back and look at my materials, you'll see that all of my materials now have bitmaps uh, that are now input. So it converted all of the substance outputs into bitmaps that we can now use in source. And now we can start actually converting this into a four-way blend inside of, inside of here. So when we go to export this to game, this material will be converted into a four-way blend when we export. I'm going to minimize the material editor and I'm going to go to the wallworm settings to make sure that I have the setting that I need. So I'm going to go to the materials tab and I'm going to make sure that this default multi-blend shader is set to light mapped four-way blend. And that's important because if it's not set to that it will export that material as a multi-blend material. But for CSGO and Black Mesa, you want to use this light map four way blend. So I'm going to close this. Those are set correctly. So what I do now is click Wallworm Materials and then choose Convert Blend Composite to DX Shaders. When I do this, you're going to see that the uh, material on there has been converted to a direct X shader. In fact, I'm now going to go back to the material editor. And I'm going to use the pick tool. I'm going to pick that material. So you, now you see that it, there's a direct X shader. The direct X shader uh, is using the composite material that we had made as its render material. Go into this direct X shader. You're going to see you have a bunch of parameters that relate to a four-way blend. What I'm going to do now is assign this material to my other object in the scene. So now I want to create some displacements. And in this case, because I want to do some sculpting here and I don't have a lot of geometry here, I'm going to use level 4 displacements, which I know that generally the source world says don't do, but we're going to do it in this case. I'm going to change my default displacement power by going to the wallworm settings and go to level design and change the default displacement power to 4. So I need to select the faces of the objects that I want to make into displacements. So in this case, this is a Corvex object. It lets me choose the tops and the sides, which will be the top and first sides of these. And then I want to go to this object and just choose the tops. So now it's going to make displacements of just the tops 
and the side. So I select both of these objects now that they have those selected and choose wall worm level design create displacements from face selections. So this will take a second and when it's done you'll see that there's just displacements of those selected objects. I'm going to immediately turn this into what's called a sculpt mesh. So I'm going to hit wall worm level design and I'm going to do create sculpt mesh. So this lets me work on all of these displacements as if they're one object. So this will be a little bit easier to visualize things if I turn off edged facing. I'm going to click F4, but I also have uh, the setting that's showing edge faces of the dis selected object. So I'm going to go to turn off display selected with edge faces. Now we see a strange looking get up here uh, by default, and that's because the uh, default vertex colors of this object are not what we need. And the blending of this material, the blending of four-way blend is done with the vertex colors. So I'm going to go down in the Modify tab and choose Paint Four-Way Blends. As soon as I click this, it brings up this Vertex Paint modifier. Channel 10 is the channel used for the four-way blend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just paint everything black. So this goes down to our default material, the base material. And at this point, if I want to change them, I'm going to click the color here. And the red channel will be how much we show texture 2. The green one is how much we show channel texture 3. And the blue channel is how much we show texture 4. So if I want to bring this all the way up and start painting here, we'll see that that material is starting to show through here. And if I bring up the green, we'll see that that material shows up. Now, let's go back to the material editor here. And you'll see that the DirectX shader has a bunch of settings, and these relate to how the materials blend and bleed between each other. So, we can actually set up visually how we want this material to blend based off of the underlying bitmaps. So you go through here and change these however you're going to need them to blend between each other. And this is dependent on, you know, how you want the materials to look yourself in your individual scenes. And you go through here and um, there are certain options that sometimes aren't immediately apparent, but they'll affect how the material looks in the end. So you can go through here and change any of these settings so to create more complex uh, blending between them. Now, here's one quirk of this. The DirectX shader is not what's used in the exporter. So you need to send these settings back to the composite material because that's what's actually used when we export. So we click this button at the bottom that says send vowels to material. If I click that, it will update uh, this material settings. So, at this point, we just go through and paint our blends how we want. So I want to do uh, the path that the players might walk here with this kind of blending here of this material. And then if you need to have some slightly different looks between them, You just start adjusting how much of each of each texture that you're going to paint at any particular point, and then you just paint it all on here. And again, if we're not happy how the colors are blending between two particular layers, go back to our Material Editor, and tweak these settings how we wish. So now that we've gotten uh, this basic setup done, um, we can now export it into the game. And let's see how this looks. 
So we have two things we need to do. We need to export the material and we need to export the VMF. So to begin with I'm going to export the material. So I'm going to select this displacement, the sculpt mesh, with this blend material. And I'm going to choose uh, exporters, export brush textures. It's going to bring up this dialog that's going to show all of the textures that are part of this and the material. And actually before we go through here I'm going to rename this material to something that uh, is useful. So I'm going to double click this and change this to so this is going to create a material in a folder called Wallworm Rocks, and then the material name is Blend 4-Way Example 1. I'm going to use the same name on the DirectX shader. I'm going to go back in here and again choose Wallworm, Exporters, Export Brush Texture. Then we have all of this. It's going to export all these VTFs into these locations, and we see we have a material that's going to output into that VMT. Just going to hit export selected and if you have Wallworm Pro uh, it'll have this dialog if you use the standard Wallworm it will have a slightly different one it'll go through and export all of these textures so I've gone ahead and done a little bit of extra sculpting on the uh, landscape to make it a little bit more interesting and now we're going to export it now remember the sculpt mesh does not actually represent it's not actually your displacements in order for the displacements to be updated we have to go to the commit changes function in the sculpt mesh over here in the modify tab you can also get to it under the level design under commit sculpt meshes if I do that it's going to commit the sculpt mesh and send the information back to the displacements and once that's done then we can export the scene so I'm going to go to exporters, export scene as VMF, and I'm not going to run the compile now, I'm just going to export it. Once that's done, we can open up the map in Hammer, and as you can see that these this material had specular, so if we don't want the specular, we can edit the material. Let's go in here to the material editor and if we want to see this a little bit easier uh, I'm just going to manually edit this material and get rid of um, the environment mapping on this. And now you can see that these this landscape is using the four-way blending on the uh, on the land and that's it but that's a basic overview of getting your creating four-way blend textures using them inside Max and then exporting them into source again my name is Sean Olson I'm the developer of Wallworm you can always get the latest versions of Wallworm tools at wallworm.com and if you want the most bang for your buck with using Wallworm, please consider getting Wallworm Pro. Also remember to subscribe to Wallworm channel on YouTube. Thank you and have a good day.